Hi, this is Christopher Boucher, and I'm going to uh, demonstrate an example of a Man Whitney U test. Now, this is a uh, non uh, parametric, meaning uh, non uh, population based or parameter based, uh, meaning that um, most of these, these types of uh, tests that are uh, not based on a uh, statistic or it's not based on a parameter. So with statistics we usually make these tests that are somehow connected with um, a population or, or characteristics of a population like a, a normal distribution. But in this case um, it's not. So what we do is uh, we work with the uh, median and um, we usually end up, because it's we work with the median, usually these problems have ranking. Um, if you remember, when you're trying to find the median, you have to rank uh, the values. The other thing is, um, usually we do these tests if, uh, if our data does not meet the characteristics of a typical statistical-based test. And that's uh, why we're doing this one. So this one... Um, is uh, normally we would uh, be able to use this data and use the two sample t test, but in this case we're not. So we, we're using the Man Whitney U test. Okay. So it says the following uh, sample was gathered from independent samples uh, from two populations. Uh, since the data does not meet the criteria for a two sample t test, you are to perform a Man Whitney U test to determine if. The median of group 1 is larger than group 2, utilizing a 5% level of significance, okay? So um, normally we would do a two-sample t-test, and um, we've used the t-distribution before, so this is a test where we are, we're comparing two groups to see if... Um, to see where there's a difference. So if it was normal, a normal distribution, we'd use this. So the assumption is this does not follow the normal distribution characteristics. But usually with these tests, they want the, um, the two distribution groups to, the two sample groups to have a similar distribution, but not, it doesn't have to be a normal distribution, meaning they could both be heavily skewed. Um, and that's, that's usually something that comes up because they're trying to compare, compare it that way as well. Okay, uh, let's take a look. Okay, so 5% level of significance. So this is the hypothesis statement. Let me zoom in. And so this is based on the idea that there's a difference between these. So when you subtract one from the other, it's about you know, the, different, the, the difference that results, and this says, oh, there's no difference, meaning equals zero, or it's, it's low. Um, typically, when you have, the, you have one of these having the equality, and the equality is not going to be in the alternative hypothesis or the alternate hypothesis, so that's, that's why you have that equality on that one. On this one, we're saying that it's actually uh, greater than zero. The difference is greater than zero, okay? And... And the reason why, uh, the other reason why this one, not only does this one have the equality part in it, but this is the less than, because the question says if the median of group one is larger, so this is when we subtract uh, two from one, if this is negative, that would support the claim that it's not larger. So that's, that's that too. Okay, so I have a lot of the data laid out only for expediency. But I'm going to put in the ranks, and then we'll calculate the rest of it. So this is just so that we don't take um, all day long on this. Okay, so I'm going to put in the ranks, and then I'm going to talk about ties. It's a five. Uh, one, I'm trying to write this clear. So when we have ties, we... Um, we treat them kind of like we uh, calculate the median. Uh, maybe I can't talk and do two things at the same time here. So if you remember when we, when we calculate the median, um, if we have an equal number of uh, data, then what we do is we get the average of the two. And in this case, try not to mess this up. I'll know at 
the end if I'm missing one. I'll scan this stuff and put it up with the rest of the videos too. Sometimes I'm a little slow at putting everything up, but the video will be up first. 15.5 and 14. So what we do, if, if we have ties, meaning um, the same value appears twice, then um, what we do is we take the, the rank before and the rank after, and we, um, we divide it by two. Now, if we have multiple ties, meaning, let's look at one of these. So 3.5 showed up two, two, at least two times. 3.5, 3.5. So what we would do is, um, so it looks like the rank before 3.5 was, uh, uh, must have been nine. Was it nine? Or it was eight. Okay, so it was eight. And then when you get up to 3.5, it was, oh, is this rank nine um, or not? Well, you have one 3.5, which would be nine, and then the next 3.5 would be 10, but that doesn't make sense. So we divide um, the nine and the 10 by two, and we get 9.5. Now, um, if we have three of them um, or four of them that tie, we still um, do the the uh, dividing in between, and, and they all get the same number. So that's how that works. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. Um, now we have the formula, and the formulas, oh, oh, the other thing that we do with this is we add up the ranks. So when we add up the ranks, it's 53. Remember, me, with medians, medians have a couple characteristics in that they uh, work well if you have uh, outliers as well. Remember, with, with means, an outlier can really affect things. But because um, we're working with medians, um, then um, it's, it works well with outliers as well because it doesn't get so affected. Okay, so these are the ranks when we add them up. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. What we would do, um, this is the formula for, for group two. This is the formula for group one. Now, because um, this is interested this, this, this whole question is interested in the median of group one is larger than group two. What we do is we only have to do the math on this one, which is the group one calculation. Now take a look at these. They're very similar. It says in one and two, in one and two, those are both the same. Two, two, both the same. In one, and then this one is in two. This is the in two side. And then in one plus one, the u1, and then on this side, the n2 plus 1. Um, and then on this one, um, when we do the uh, subtract the uh, sum of the ranks, this one's the r2 rank, this one's the r1 rank. So they are different, but they're very similar. The other thing that I will point out is that um, in this uh, calculation, we have n's. In the n's, we have n1 and n2, and they're the lowercase. And um, it's just the uh, total um, of the first group, and that is, uh, that is 9, I believe, yeah. And then same with the second one. So that's where those ends come from. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're looking for the, we're going to be uh, more closely scrutinizing uh, U1. So we're going to use that, and that's what we're going to compare with our uh, critical statistic. Okay, so I'm going to do the math here. I'll, you know, lay it all out, and then we'll we'll jump to the answer because um, it gets kind of messy doing all of this. So this is how how the numbers actually lay out. That's a nine multiplied by nine plus nine parentheses nine plus one over two. And then it would be uh, subtract the sum of R1, which is right here, 53. And the answer ends up being 73. Okay, so this is our, our 73 right here. This is our uh, calculated statistic, or in this case, it's not called a statistic. We're going to say calculated value. We can say calculated U value to be more specific, but I want to say calculated 
value is fine. Okay, so now what we want to do is we need to figure out our, um, our critical value. So we have our calculated value, critical value. So this is where, well, this and the way that we determine whether we reject or not um, is a little different. And so in this case, remember over here I listed the N1 is uh, 9 and N2 is 9. So the, the Mann-Whitney U-test actually has a table to do this. It's like a degrees of freedom, but it's just what we do. I'll zoom in. What we do is we take the N1 and the N2, which is this side, and we find where they intersect. In this case, I believe we're working with a 5%, 5% level of significance. So in this case, they're both nine, so we don't have to get too concerned about which one. So there's a nine, and here's a nine. So this is the five, 5%. Five and it looks like it intersects at the 21. Okay, I'll I'll put this uh, table up as well. So it intersects at 21. So we can write this a couple ways. I'll write it like um, do something like um, mm, in one in two. is uh, 21. Critical value. So that's our critical value. I'll scoot up. I'll back up just a little bit. Okay, so that's our critical. Okay, so now we're coming to the decision making part. And you'll notice that I have this rectangle down below. Um, so what I started doing was if when I'm describing rejecting or hypothesis uh, rejecting, I used to use, I, or I still use this term called rejection zone, but um, I don't want to draw a distribution that isn't necessarily um, what it is, meaning, um, you know, you kind of want to draw a picture, and I always tell people to draw a picture, but... I'm trying to get people out of the mindset that this is not necessarily a um, distribution that we're familiar with because it obviously doesn't match one of the distributions that we've used um, in the previous units because that was all statistical-based problems. So in this case, I just have a um, rectangle. The other thing is this is different in the way that we reject or do not reject. And so I have it listed right here. It says reject HO, calculated U, is less than or equal to critical U. So this is our um, decision making. And then do not reject HO if the calculated U is larger than the uh, critical U. So um, this is actually, if you think about it, it's backwards from what we usually do. Usually I would have something like this picture, but it'd be flipped. And I'd say, well, if the uh, calculated is larger than the critical, then we reject because you would be in the rejection zone. And that's the term I have always, uh, I've always used. And um, I'm guessing other people have too. So, but in this case, it's backwards because we're looking for the differences. Um, so I flip this. And, and this is the this is how this is going to work. So we're going to place our calculated uh, for, uh, scratch that. We're going to first place our critical right here. So this is going to be critical. It's always the critical is always placed right at the border of the rejection zone. So the critical is 21. Going off the page. And the calculated is 73 anywhere out here. The theory is still the same, that this is zero, and this goes on to infinity or something like that in the range of the way that these numbers are. So what this means, if we flip this and we stick to the rejection zone idea, which I recommend, 
um, we are not in the rejection zone. So in that case, in this case, we are not going to reject. So that what that means is um, there is not um, our hypothesis that uh, the median of group one is larger than group two. Um, while it may appear to be larger, based on the significance level that we are testing to, it is not larger, meaning it does not pass that. It might be that if we change the significance, that might that might um, do it too. But then you're tinkering with it um, in, after the fact, which is which which is kind of one of the ways you lie with statistics is you make things fit. So that is it. Thank you.